Good morning, Cindy here. And today we are gonna talk about do-it-yourself drip irrigation. And I have all the supplies needed. I've been doing drip irrigation in my yard for many years now. And it's so much better than overhead sprinkling or hand watering, of course. <laughs> because here in Central Texas, it is so hot and dry that uh, you, you will spend your whole spring and summer and fall watering by hand if you don't do something like this. It's also much preferred than the overhead water sprinkler. So many of our plants just do not like to, to be watered from overhead. And plus that water is, a lot of it is going up into the air, evaporating, and your water and your money are going right up in the air with it. So this is a much more efficient way to get water to your plants. Now in the front yard, I have the professional uh, drip irrigation done by professionals. It, it uses a manifold system with those green boxes that they set down in the ground and it has those, there's three or four zones and they are wonderful and that is all electric and very dependable. But that is very expensive to do that. We did it in the front yard. But the backyard, we have half an acre, and it just didn't seem like it was going to make sense. So we've got this other system that I'm going to show you today, and it, it is work, but it is definitely much more economical, and it works just fine. So it's not something that you are going to put in and forget about, though. You do have to monitor it, and let me show you there the, you're going to use these timers this timer has one outlet i um also have timers that have two outlets and some have four outlets and these are wonderful this one is by rainbird we have uh, several others the ones we have in the backyard also are by orbit and <clears throat> they're battery operated so you do need to monitor that the batteries are working so about once a year we just automatically change out the batteries and we do monitor all through the year to make sure and you'll see that when you go to uh, check that it's running you'll see that it's if it's not on there's a problem <laughs> so uh, and this is great you can set this you can go on vacation and it will water the zones that you tell it to water when you want to water it and how often you want to water it so we'll talk about timers a little bit later. So the first thing you need is a water source. And this is what you're gonna use, the do it yourself. You just use the faucet right on the side of your home. And we have four faucets in, on this home. And so I have four opportunities to hook up these timers. And I usually have the timer with the four uh, outlets because I have so many gardens and I need, you know, lots and lots of zones. So all of my faucets all around the, the house have timers and all of them are using four zones each. Now, another thing that we use is this splitter here. And that way I can still have my timer here. And on this side, I can still keep my hose connected. And I can show you an example here. So I on, this is my water hose uh, when I want to hand water something. And then this side here is going to a, another faucet that my husband has created for us. And that's where we have our timer. So because we have such a big property, we needed to add more faucets all around the, the backyard. And I'll show you some of those. They're kind of Frankensteinish. Um, he, my husband is just very clever, and so he knows how to set this stuff up. But the other thing, it's very important. Most homes already have a backflow um, monitor here. So let me get a little closer. And if you don't have a backflow piece on your faucet, then you just need to add one, and it would go right here between the faucet and your splitter. And that just keeps uh, any kind of 
bad water or, or soil or anything from going back up into your home water. So now let's look at all of the supplies that you need. Um, first of all, it's very important that wherever you get your supplies that you stick with that company unless you just absolutely hate it. <laughs> because from company to company, things may be off just the slightest bit. And if you try to put one company's products together with another company's, sometimes you're going to have problems with things leaking. So um, we use a company called dripdepot.com and it's free shipping on if you purchase $49 and that's real easy to do. And um, I everything I have here is about $100. So that's a really great savings, especially, you know, the rest of it is just your own labor. Okay, so let's start and let me show you what we need. So one of the first things you need is tubing. And there's two kinds of tubing that you'll get. Uh, the first one is called half inch black poly. Um, and this one has no emitters, no holes in it at all. And this is just to get the water from, one, from your faucet all the way out to where your garden is. And so there, there are no holes here. And then this one is the same size, the half inch. And this one is the drip tubing. And if I get very close, you can see that it has a lot of holes there every 18 inches. You see those? And they just give your plants a slow drip. And this gives you about one gallon per hour. And so most homes deliver about 25 PSI, pounds per square inch of water and so that, that is just fine for this kind of tubing. Now, if you have a problem with water pressure in your area, then this may not be the system for you, but um, it's, you can try it on a small scale and see if it works. Now, I usually end up buying this in 100 um, or more feet. Um, these, this is a, probably about 100 feet right here. And one faucet, um, in most homes will supply about 400 to 450 feet of tubing. So, and I have four faucets. Now I run this on at different times. I wouldn't turn all of my faucets on at the same time. I, you know, we just don't have enough water pressure for that. But doing it in sections and at different times, you have plenty of pressure. So like on Monday, I'll water one garden, Tuesday I'll water a different garden, and so on. Another part that you're going to need is the connector directly from the timer to the tubing. So this is made for the half inch tubing. So it goes, this has the screws for the timer, or it can go directly to the faucet if you don't have a timer and then it adapts down to the half inch tubing. So this is really important to go from the faucet or the timer to the half inch tubing. So you're gonna need connectors. This is, there's straight connectors, there's T's, and there's elbows if you wanna make a 90 degree turn, and there's end caps. So you, you're going to, probably need all four of these and you can buy them in a kit or you can just buy uh, you know kind of go out and imagine how your your garden is going to be maybe even draw it up um, it's on a quick sketch of your garden and try to count up how many of these you need before you place your order now that my husband really likes the drip depot brand because when you put your tubing in, in the connector, you have these screws, these, the ends, if I can do it, they screw down over the tube and it makes a very strong connection. And you can unscrew it and it is almost impossible to get them back off though. So if you make a mistake, 
you just cut that off and then you would actually have to really pry the tube back off. But that's, you know, we make mistakes, so get ready for that. Now the Rainbird, um, this is what you see at Lowe's and Home Depot. They do not have the additional screw down piece, but they really seem to do fine too. You just, they're pretty easy to just push on and they don't, it's very hard to get these back off once you've got, once you get them on. Um, if you put these, or if you're trying to put these on and this tubing is just not cooperating, I use a, a lighter like you would light your fireplace and warm this up a little bit, maybe even at, get a little bit wet. You, my husband spits on it, and then this will go in much easier. Okay, uh, the other thing is cutting. So this is a tool that you can use, and it will cut cut this for you very nicely. Also, but you can also just use uh, clippers that you would clip your roses with but you don't want to use your good clippers, use your bad clippers. So you can purchase this or just use clippers. Um, you might want one of these so you can have your water hose on this side and your, your timer on this side. You'll definitely want to buy a timer. Now these are about $50. And so this is, is something that is your high ticket item on this. You may need some white tape. This is to put around any of your connections. Sometimes if you find that it's leaking, you, you definitely can use a little bit of white tape. This acts kind of like a washer, and this helps maybe um, to cut down on any leaks. Another thing you're gonna need are landscape pins or staples. Now this is the kind you get at Lowe's and you get 75 in a package, but these are really wimpy. And so I'm gonna link below um, an Amazon link and the, the, the contractor's version of these are much longer and much more durable. So I definitely recommend getting a lot of these. Um, you, you're gonna wanna get like 100 to 200 of these because you use these to pin everything down. And then you're gonna want a lot of mulch when you're finished. So you, you lay this out, you pin it down, and then you mulch everything on top. And that way it's hidden. You wanna keep this tubing protected. Um, in, here in Central Texas, our sun is just very destructive. It is so hot, we have so many days in the hundreds. So if you keep this covered with mulch, then this drip tubing will last you a lot longer. Um, I use a mallet to kind of drive these in because it is sometimes a little hard to get these to go down into my, our rocky soil. And I mentioned the um, backflow. If you don't have a black backflow on your faucet directly from your house, then you can just buy these and they just screw on to your faucet and then to the timer. And that way you won't have to worry about any, anything coming back into your house. And then this is a pressure register. If for some reason you have crazy pressure at your house, too much pressure, then you can add this and this will control the pressure to 25 PSI. But, um, I don't ever have that problem. I have the problem of not enough pressure, <laughs> but that's a good problem to have. And that's about all you need. So let's get started putting it in. One more thing we can talk about. Uh, I'm gonna make another video later on, and I'm gonna talk about using this quarter inch tubing. And this also has the emitters built in every Oh, this is probably every 12 inches. And this is great for your container plants, uh, container pots. And you just make a little circle in the pot and you can attach this to your, your half inch tubing. And I'll show you in a, a follow-up video how to add 
quarter inch tubing to your container pot. And that's really nice. It allows you to go on vacation and not worry about your plants all dying while you're gone. But that's for another video. So now I'm gonna give you a little tour of my husband's Frankenstein version of drip irrigation. So here we have a splitter, a copper splitter, and this is our my handheld hose. And this is a connector. He just took a piece of garden hose and he ran it here. The, the purpose of that is it is flexible and it can go where he wants it to go. And then he hooked it into some PVC pipe. And you can just buy those little connectors that go from the water hose to a to this little piece here. And then that you glue this. PVC into this. So there's a little bit of gluing going on. You buy PVC glue. And then that goes along the side of the house. And it makes an L at the fence here. And it goes behind this shrub. So you, it goes behind my compost bin. Comes out over here along the fence line. Goes behind the sunflowers. And voila, here it is. I have two timers here. So he's put in another faucet here. And I have below here, I have a Melnor faucet, uh, a Melnor timer. And this one up here is an Orbit timer. They don't sell these Melnors at Lowe's right now. And so the Orbit is just fine. And they come in four, four connectors. But uh, we have six zones now. So this one goes and waters this garden. And this was quite a feat, getting this tubing underneath this pathway. <laughs> but we were smart enough to do that before they put the pathway in. But it can be done. If you have sidewalks or any kind of pathways, you certainly can get things underneath there. And that's another video. And then this one will water this garden. And I have just finished this one. I wanted to show it to you before I covered it up with mulch. And you can see I have these landscape pins all around to hold it in place. And I have it in grid fashion. So the grid is a really smart thing to do because you you know that you know it's about 18 inches apart and you can also feel it underneath the mulch fairly easy to find it before you start digging because i plan to put more things in here and uh, or dig things out so i'm always changing things in the garden and as long as you can find your drip tubing and not puncture it that's a good thing and then right here is the very end you can see I have an end cap right there. And I didn't really use any T's or elbows in this section. I just kind of did concentric circles. So I started, I started from here, from the timer, and I did a larger circle. And then I just kept going around and getting the, the circle getting smaller and smaller. But I do see an issue, and I'm gonna point this out. I tried to make too sharp of a curve. So I am gonna be clipping that out and putting in a, a 90 degree elbow, and that will make, that will definitely help, because what I've got going on here, I have stopped my water, I'm sure. <laughs> So we keep going on. The white PVC continues into the very back section. And I have, we have another faucet. He's actually added a piece of wood here to, um, for it to support the faucet. Wrapping that with zip ties. He may have to come back with metal. Those zip ties usually don't 
work as well as metal wire. And then I have, we have timers here. So th these timers go to my pollinator garden. And those are, uh, you know, there's concentric circles going and you can see it's doing a great job. I have another tube going across the back fence, watering all of that all the way down. And I have these two are dedicated to the grass. So they go underneath here and all the way. And there's actual sprinklers for the grass. And I will show you that from the same company, driftdepot.com, you can add sprinkler heads. So here they are. And this is the do it yourself. You can do this to be like a full circle spray or a 180 spray, whatever you need. You just adjust it with this little screw here in the center. And it does pop up whenever we turn that sprinkler on. So you can choose to use sprinklers for grass and drip for your perennials or gardens. So that is a quick tour. If you look out, I have a lot more areas. I have the day lily beds. I have the beds up against the house. So I have so many areas that I use the drip irrigation in. Here's another garden that I have plenty of drip in. And it would have cost me, uh, you know, the price of my house to get all this drip in. But doing it myself with my husband's help, it was mostly him. <laughs> then we can do this on a shoestring budget. So it is a really smart thing to do. I thought I'd show you a little bit more close up of the whole timer situation. Okay, so we have put a faucet back here in the back section of the house. And this faucet, um, I decided to paint this PVC brown. I took a can of spray paint and I just spray painted this entire row because I just was sick of looking at the white PVC and I plan to do that on uh, all of the other sections and I even spray painted the faucet. <laughs> so the first thing you see from the faucet is a splitter and this is a copper splitter you can buy these anywhere and this one is dedicated to my water hose so I have my hose in this hose reel here and then this side is dedicated to the timer and four zones. So one of my zones is not being used right now. So these all go off to different sections of the back garden. And if you get in here, you can choose to manually turn it on. You can set the timer up and not even think about it anymore. So you first of all set your clock and you use these little plus and minuses. You can se select your days that you would like to water. So I water um, usually twice a week. And then your start water time. So let's say you want it to come on at six o'clock in the morning and then you want it to water for how long. So here in our, when it's the hottest, our soil here in this part of Central Texas is very, very dense. And I have to water for a full hour uh, to get the saturation needed. But you can play with that. You'll just have to turn it, turn yours on and see how long. And then you, you're going to kind of dig around in there and see if, how far down it went and if you did get good saturation. But I find an hour, sometimes even 90 minutes, is what I have to do. And then um, you're, you are, can turn it on to auto, and it will do that for you regularly. And the last thing to talk about on this timer is zones. And so it is a really good idea to get some little tags and label each of these zones so you know what is what. And so that is the next thing that I must do because I'm always confused 
you know, what, what is this going to, what is this going to? So some labels is a really great idea. So let's say this, for sure, this is zone one, this is zone two, this, this is zone three, and this is zone four. So you will click the on button and then you will, there's, this one says zone one, two, three, and four. And right now it is, it is flashing, whoops, it is flashing zone one. And then you will tell it how many minutes. So you just say, okay, 10 minutes for zone one. Then you click zone again, and now it's flashing zone two. How many minutes do you want zone two? But we, and you also need to tell it which day. So there's quite a few things. CNET just came on. <laughs> it shows me the little sprinkler and I can feel water coming through this, which is great. And you can leave this on all the time. You never ever turn this off. And you turn these on. So this is off. So when it's to the left, my water hose is off. And then when it's straight up and down, straight up and down is on. So you leave this on all the time and you leave this on all the time. And that way the timers can come on and off and they can get water. And then when you want to use your water hose, you turn this and now my water hose is running. And then you turn it back to turn it off. So straight up and down is on and 90 degrees is off. That was a little confusing for me. Another thing you want to do is, you know, before you go to bed at night, you may want to just double check. When I have so many timers going on, uh, I sure don't ever want to leave uh, something unattended. So make sure you check your water before you go to bed. <laughs> so I hope I have inspired you to try to do your own drip system. Um, it is, it's not hard. It, you do, you want to start it early in the morning so you can get it done before it gets too hot and do it in, do it in sections. You know, one day lay it out, another day pin it down, another day put the mulch on top and another day figure out the timer. Or you can do it all in one day, whatever you want to do. But it is, it is very, very satisfying to have just have things just start watering on their own and and you can do other things in your garden besides figuring out the water <laughs> but water is one of the most important things that is going to help your plants survive our incredible heat and our drought and you can water very very early in the morning and uh, keep that water in the soil keeping a really thick layer of mulch on top Oftentimes um, we get into a severe drought and they tell us that we can only water once a week and uh, you can still have a beautiful yard. You just have to start watering your, um, your zones early in the morning, um, get, get a zone watered and then an, another zone and another zone all through the day and you can get all of your areas watered. Uh, you may shorten that time um, to benefit the drought and um, it's, but you can certainly get all of your gardens watered in one day per week. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I I'm very curious to know if any of you out there have put in your own drip system and let me know if you have and if you've been successful. Okay, well, thank you so much. Please share this video with a friend I appreciate all of your comments. I read every single one of them. And um, I have just really enjoyed our little community that we're building here in our unusually difficult soil and climate. But as you can see from looking at my garden, it can be done. And uh, water is one of the most important things though. <laughs> okay, y'all have a wonderful day. I hope everybody gets a chance to get out in your garden and put in some, some kind of a water system. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.